Hi guys. Finding proxies with suitable pricing and good quality, capable of handling account registration and management tasks, is one of the key concerns for many individuals. In this video, I will share my experience in choosing type of proxies, proxy providers, and instruct you on how to check the quality of these proxies. To me, to choose the right type of proxy, first of all, you need to understand all the different types of proxy such as IPv4 versus IPv6, residential proxy versus data center proxy, static proxy versus rotating proxy, along with the features of each type to determine if it's suitable for your needs. Firstly, let's talk about IPv4 and IPv6 proxies. IPv4 is widely used and supported by most websites, but IPv4 addresses are running out due to the increasing demand for internet usage. Hence, IPv6 was developed to create more IP addresses. Since one IPv4 can generate multiple IPv6 addresses, the price of IPv4 proxies will undoubtedly be higher than that of IPv6 proxies. However, not many websites support IPv6 yet. For example, IPv6 proxies can access Amazon but may not work with eBay or Etsy. Google and Facebook still support IPv6, but the ratio of my Facebook accounts getting banned using IPv6 is higher than those using IPv4. So, in conclusion, currently, IPv4 proxies are still given the highest priority by most websites. However, due to cost and limited supply, you can consider using IPv6 proxies. If the websites you need to access support IPv6, then that's great. Next, let's discuss rotating proxies and static proxies. A rotating proxy, also known as a dynamic proxy, is a type of proxy that automatically changes its IP address over time or with each browsing session. On the other hand, a static proxy is a type of proxy with a fixed IP address, and you will always access websites with that same IP address. If you're using proxies for e-commerce purposes, such as selling on various platforms, it's better to use static proxies. However, if you're using proxies to register or manage accounts, rotating proxies can be more suitable. Now, moving on to data center proxies and residential proxies. Data center proxies are created from servers located in data centers, offering affordable pricing, fast internet speeds, and stability. Residential proxies, on the other hand, are proxies created or sourced from local internet service provide, similar to using a regular home internet connection. The speed and stability of residential proxies may not be as fast and consistent as data center proxies. However, based on the definition, residential proxies are generally considered more trustworthy than data center proxies, making them more expensive. Therefore, depending on your task, you still need to test both types to optimize your costs. For example, when performing activities that are more likely to be detected, I would recommend using residential proxies. For other tasks, you can use data center proxies to save money and ensure better stability. So, I've provided an overview of comparing some types of proxies. In my experience, when dealing with tasks that are more prone to account bans, such as registering accounts, it's better to use residential proxies, either IPv4, and both rotating and static proxies can work. For managing accounts, it depends on your experience and budget, as the cost of purchasing proxies can be quite high, especially when using multiple accounts. Now I will guide you on how to check the quality of a proxy. Let's use an IPv4 proxy as an example, which is a static proxy with a location in Singapore. I'm currently logging into a Google Ads account using this proxy. First, check the location to see if the proxy's location matches the one displayed after running it. The simplest way is to check on Google search. If the country displayed at the bottom of the search results matches the country of the proxy you purchased, then the proxy has the correct location. You should also check on websites that deeply detect IP addresses such as eBay or Amazon. In the shipment section, if the website automatically displays shipping to the country of the proxy you are using, then the proxy has the correct location. Additionally, you can check on websites like whore.net or ipfighter.com. The information about the proxy's location, such as country and city, will be displayed when you access these websites. Next, check if the IP address is blacklisted on any websites. You can use services like IPfighter or IPscore. The results of the blacklist check on these sites are for reference only because these sites may not have data on all websites on the internet. However, if the proxy you're using is blacklisted on multiple websites, its trustworthiness is likely to be low. 
On IP Fighter, if your IP is blacklisted, it will be marked in red, and the list of blacklisted websites will be provided. For checking blacklist on ipscore.com, it might be a bit more involved. When performing a blacklist check, keep in mind that if a proxy is blacklisted on website A, it may still work for website B. You should directly test the proxy on the websites to be sure. If you can't access the desired website, there's a high chance that the proxy is blacklisted by them. Besides location and blacklist, IP Fighter can also check and report the following issues. Time zone different. Display language. WebRTC leak. DNS leak. For example, if you use a different profile on Hide Myac and check on IP Fighter, it may report a time zone different error. To fix this, you can refer to the How to Fix section or the blog on IP Fighter. Lastly, check the speed of this proxy on what is my IP. Adding a proxy may affect the network speed, so you should check how fast this proxy accesses the internet. If the proxy has slow access speed, you may experience issues like stuttering, lag, or network disconnections while using it. These are the upload and download speeds of the proxy I'm currently using. The access speed is relatively stable, so I can handle tasks with minimal stuttering, lag, or network loss. I just introduced you to the classification of proxies and how to check the quality of proxies. So, where can you buy proxies? There are many providers out there, so how do you know which one to choose? In various Facebook and Telegram groups, you'll find many sellers offering proxies, but it can be challenging to determine the quality of these proxies. For peace of mind, you should choose reputable providers with a well-established presence in the market. Here are some well-known proxy providers you can consider, Bright Data, Shifter, Smart Proxy, My Private Proxy. These providers offer both data center and residential proxies with relatively large IP pools. However, it's essential to note that if one IP pool is used by many people, the IPs can quickly become worn out. Even if you buy proxies from reputable providers, you may still encounter issues like blacklisting, captchas, and verification when accessing certain websites. In such cases, you might want to explore and search for new proxy providers in the market that are not yet widely known. For example, I tested SOC Escort when it wasn't well known, and although the IP pool was not large, the quality of the IPs was quite good. You'll need to invest money in buying and testing the quality of these proxies before using them for your operations. Finding and selecting high-quality, effective, and suitable proxies for your specific use case is not an easy task. Sometimes, you have to spend a considerable amount of time, money, and effort to test and find proxies that meet your requirements. I hope that the information about how to check the quality of proxies and the reputable proxy sources I have used can assist you in finding suitable proxies. If you find the video helpful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to support me in creating more content. Wishing you all success!